Now we have an ABC News exclusive, beloved friend star Matthew Perry sitting down with our Diane Sawyer for an incredibly honest interview about his new memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. Sharing his hard-fought battle with addiction, Perry's struggle, which he calls the Big Terrible Thing, was so tough, but so was his charm and determination to fight his way out. A home in Los Angeles, the door opens. Mom? <laughs> oh, it's Diane Sawyer. Oh, that Matthew Perry. Really wonderful to see you. Please wow. come in. Matthew Perry is 53 years old, but he knows most of us will always remember when we first saw him. One of those six young friends creating a new kind of funny, a new kind of family. Okay, who wants light cheese and who wants dark cheese? Chandler Bing, played by an actor who was effortlessly so fast and original. <laughs> Someone at work ate my sandwich. Well, what did the police say? And now it seems impossible that all those years ago when we were laughing, we never knew that the young star was fighting for his life in a riptide of addiction. It was pulling him to hell and back over and over again, and he was trying to keep it a secret from everyone. Secrets kill you. Secrets kill people like me. Now, Matthew Perry has put those secrets on the pages of a book. It is dedicated to other sufferers who, like him, might need help. It was important to me to do something that would help people. You sure know how to make people fasten their seatbelts. Oh, good. Thanks. I'm glad you read it. Matthew Perry, take one. Friends, lovers, and the big terrible thing. You start with a thunderclap, first page. Hi, my name is Matthew, although you may know me by another name. My friends call me Maddie, and I should be dead. Yeah, that's definitely true. You say, addiction, the big terrible thing, is far too powerful for anyone to defeat alone. But together, one day at a time, we can beat it down. Yeah. Your disease is just outside, just doing one arm push-ups, just waiting, just waiting for you, waiting to get you alone. Because alone, you lose to the disease. And now I finally feel okay and feel like I've got some strength. What does it mean to feel okay? It means that I've developed some safety nets around this, you know. For some reason, it's obviously because I was on Friends, more people will listen to me. So I've got to take advantage of that. I've got to help as many people as I can. We've all learned it's not ours to ask someone in recovery how long they've been sober. That's a personal road. But he says it's why he's written the harrowing details of his journey through alcohol, all those drugs, and the fight to break free. I want to just do it by the numbers because you're sending postcards from hell to everyone out there who needs it. 6,000 AA meetings, therapy 30 years, 15 rehab, yeah. maybe at least. Half of your life in treatment or in sober living houses? He has been in detox, he estimates, 65 times. Survived 14 surgeries after a nearly fatal emergency three years ago. They ran me into um, the emergency trauma room and it was in there that my colon exploded. Well, I was put on an ECMO machine. An ECMO machine, when you talk to any doctor, is a Hail Mary. It is the last thing that you do before people die. And there were five people that night that were put on ECMO machine, and I was the only one who survived. He was in a coma for 14 days. As he heals from all he's been through, there's still wear and tear on his voice and speech, and the scars on his body like a warrior back from battle. I was in that hospital for five months and, you know, escaped death really narrowly. Perry says he's proof that addiction can enter any home, any heart. If you try to map the fault lines underneath an addiction, you often find unanswerable questions. Perry says he does remember the day he thought he had found an answer. He's 14 with his Canadian pals and a common teenage rite of passage. I'd never drank before, and I just sort of drank this entire bottle of what was called Anwar's Baby Duck 
That was the name of the wine. And I lay in the grass and just was in, was in heaven. And I thought to myself, this must be the way that normal people feel all the time. And I thought that at 14. His friends could drink and stop. But for him, the relief was so easy, it became his destination. But, you know, by the time I was 18, I was drinking, I was drinking every day. It's a pattern he continues, even after landing a starring role in a show that was then called Friends Like Us. He hopes fame will fill up the hole inside, but it doesn't. And that was a dark day for me when I realized that it did not do that, that it did not fix what I thought was, what I knew was broken. And now the added fear of being on a high wire with about 25 million people watching. He says his terror deepens. So does his loneliness and shame. Alone so I could drink. Drinking, therefore alone. I'd drink, watch the movie, pass out, wake up, drink, watch the movie, pass out. But you had no trouble with the lines, you had no trouble with the timing, you had no trouble showing up every day? Early on, yes. And I made a rule that I would never drink or take anything at work. So I would never do that, but I would show up blindly hungover, like shaking and crazy hungover. But still somehow brilliant on camera, maybe because he's an athlete and young and cares so much. Well, I loved Chandler. I loved the show, and I also knew, remember this, because it's going to be the best time of your life. And I knew it. I knew that I would never forgive myself if I messed this up. Lisa Kudrow says Matthew Perry was always the one trying to keep everyone else happy. Lisa is the funniest, maybe the funniest person I've ever worked with, and just sees the world in a really funny way. And Jennifer Aniston? They had met years earlier. Perry asked her out on a date. She said, no, let's be friends. You had one of your serial crushes, if mm -hmm. I may say. Yeah, I mean, how can you... You really kind of chain crushed. I did. Well, how can you not have a crush on Jenny and Courtney and Lisa? Uh, so it made it kind of difficult to go to work because I had to pretend that I didn't yeah. have these. Yes, you write in the book. I was kept wondering, how long can I just look at her? Yes. I was like, is three seconds too long? How long is... <laughs> and then I write in the gratitude part mm -hmm. about her letting me do that. By the year 2000, he is still the star of the mega-hit TV show, now in its sixth year. But the spiral into prescription drugs has begun. 55, like in a day, which is where I was. 55? Yeah. How did you get 55 a day? Well, I had to wake up and realize that I needed to get 55 of them or I was going to be really sick. So I did all sorts of things. So I had a bunch of doctors, fake migraines and all that stuff. And I guess the weirdest thing I did was on Sundays, I would go to open houses and go to the bathrooms in the, so in the open house and see what pills they had in there and steal them. And I think they thought, well, there's no way that Chandler came in and stole from us. Mm. So oh, incredibly honest and open like that. Unbelievable. It is. And, and Diane's going to be with us here tomorrow, and she's going to uh, show us a friend's moment that Matthew Perry loves to see, and also another one that reminds him of when his life was spinning out of control. We all saw the physical changes on screen, but we never really fully understood. Plus how his friends tried to help. And you can see Matthew Perry, the Diane Sawyer interview tomorrow night, 8, 7 central here on ABC. And if you or someone you care about is struggling with substance abuse, a substance abuse uh, disorder, confidential free help is available at findtreatment.gov. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.